Hello friends, welcome to Channel Raza Blade. I'm your friendly neighborhood Raza. Today's video is a tutorial. It is a bit of a side quest kind of tutorial, meaning that it's not something that you might mm, deliberately, you, you might not deliberately search for this in YouTube or various places online, but it's a technique that looks awesome and uh, I am preparing my video. Um, some of you know that I suffer from migraines. Um, it's been a little bit slower than normal and May's Manny by Me box is um, definitely pretty exciting, especially if you like summer. And I, there's a postcard image and I think you can see my idea was to paint realistic or, you know, quasi realistic, uh, gradients for sky and you know whatever you need within a reverse stamp and the process or procedure is vastly different from when you would do it on a nail I can use a sponge on a nail I'm painting in a reverse stamp how would I do that well I will show you today hello friends future Reza here I know it's very convenient that I have a DeLorean that I've hacked with the flex capacitor so that I can come on back here and tell you that this is a two-part video now. I recorded way too much footage. So I have part one is regular reverse stamping. Part two includes the gradient. So that way you can watch what you want to watch and you can watch it without having to handle 45 minutes of me all at once. So of course this was bigger than I expected, but two parts. So this part Part one, definitely this is the part to, to watch if you're interested in how I do my reverse stamping. Enjoy! Um, so buckle up, we're going for, this won't be a bumpy ride though. This will be fun and smooth, as long as I don't go on too many tangents. Um, so uh, this means that within the next couple of days, you'll see my Mini by Me review video. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that you get that. And if you're new here, welcome. I have a channel where I review a lot of different products. I teach you how to stamp. I show you tips and tricks and all sorts of things. So um, again, please give the video a thumbs up or like it if you have learned anything or enjoyed it in any way. So um, as far as before we start on the actual tutorial, uh, this is coming out either Thursday or Friday. Uh, so Friday, May 7th or 6th, no, 6th through the 9th is Polish Pickup. Some of you know you can buy a lot of different one-time only polishes there. Uh, the only one I have swatched for this month is a Multichrome by Graceful. Uh, some of you will have already seen my one Manny that I did, but it is gorgeous. It goes from uh, purple to pink to, well, you know, you can kind of see the gold. I mean, kind of yellow. Anyway, it's really cool. It's called Solid, Solid Rock. And um, I did this second Manny for it because May is national or no, just general mental health, health awareness month. So I used some Manny plates and threw together a take space for yourself, um, be kind to yourself, little Manny here on this with this gorgeous polish so i will have the polish pickup link in the description for this video as well as any other uh products that i mentioned very specifically i gathered already together um you don't have to use stamping polishes as far as uh what you will need as far as products for this uh to do what i depict in my tutorial um you want to get a gradient together uh, for whatever you're coloring in. For me, it's skies. Here's a nice blue day. Uh, I look through all my stamping polishes. Like I said, you don't have to use a stamping polish for this. Whatever you color within a reverse stamp, uh, you don't have to use. You can even use acrylic paint if you like. And then this is the other sky that we're going to create. Um, technically, it's it can be called ombre if it's within the same color family like this. This is an ombre. But just generally, all those colors that you're blending together into one fell swoop, uh, that would be a gradient. So all ombres are gradients, but only some ombres, flip it, but only some gradients are ombres. All right, so that is solid rock. Very awesome. Uh, I'm going to start by 
uh, starting as I would start a reverse stamp. So here we go, four minutes in and I'm finally starting. I'm gonna go ahead and try this stamp here. This comes in the Manny by Me box. I haven't tried it out yet. I have a few like it. I actually wanted to compare it directly to this one I got from AliExpress. Um, I did not want a just any old Galaxy stamper, so I got the kind you could see through because that was the big issue with the pretty Galaxy heads before is, okay, I don't really want to buy any more stampers that I, that I can't reverse stamp with. Like, that's, that's my deal. And see-through has been the standard for so long that, I mean, why would, if, if you have to, sure, but if you don't have to, why, why stamp with anything that's not see-through? I'm going to go ahead and get some. All right, the first thing we're going to stamp is I want a little background for my um, Polaroids, for the Polaroids. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some purple polish. This is Color Alike's I can save myself. This is kind of like one of the streams I do, I guess, essentially, except that I have a specific procedure that I already have in mind to teach you about how to make gradients within your reverse stamps. All right. I waited a bit too long, if you can see, to grab this, but these are just for demo. So really no need to be to perfectionist today. Then I'll grab some acetone. And then another purple. So before I make my, I mean, you can do this while you are reverse stamp to kind of save time. You can do this while your reverse stamp, stamp is, uh, what's the word? Uh, heads up. This just fell off and I wouldn't want anybody to have acetone anywhere on their workstation and that to happen with theirs. So maybe use it before you actually use it to see if this falls off and put it aside um, so that it can be safe. Anyway, so, but I did distract myself from whatever I was saying. Anyway, these are just designs to kind of make it look like a cooler. I like to have a background even when I am doing something really big as far as reverse stamping. I mean, if you have a smaller nail, like a regular square, a sport square, length square, this will take up your whole nail. And so you won't need to do this bit with all the backgrounds and stuff. But if you have a longer nail, you might like to, did I really put away the sticky base coat? No, okay. So I'm trying out today, I'm trying to use some of, some more of a, Maniology's sticky base coat. Let's do the purple and the yellow. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with color theory or um, have seen my video on color theory, and I do have one. Um, it uh, discusses that purple and yellow are um, complementary colors, which means they're directly across the color wheel from one another. And that means that things that are purple will stand out really nicely on yellow. It looks really cool, right? Or at least that's what I think. I don't, I always do this. I paint too many little models for the example nails. I would like some sort of a top coat, even if it's a stinky one. All right, we've got a Maniology water-based top coat here. My gloves are two different colors today because the one on the right is latex, but I am sensitive to latex, but latex is what survives acetone. And I don't feel like using my clothespin today. Normally, you know, you can, if you have nice nails on or whatever, you can go ahead and use a clothespin or something like it to, uh, you know, to use your, whatever that's called. All right, so I have that down and now I'm going to go ahead and pick up the stamp for you because there is a really quick thing that you'll want to do, all right? And it is a little harder with the gloves on because the tape wants to stick to me, but that's fine. We all do what we can, don't we? All right, so let's do the drinks here. I just put way too much. There was no reason to use that much stamping polish. 
Usually I try to stamp once, I mean, try to scrape once. All right, so I got a barely usable, look how close I was to the edge there. All right, so this is important about, about when you use your tape to uh, remove the extra bits that you don't wanna stamp, right? So one thing I've noticed is that I tend to get a cleaner break when I push directly down and I push directly down, I kind of force the area to break instead of playing with fire, essentially, which is when you just put it down and you pull it up without kind of breaking the line as well as you can. I tend to get maybe a less predictable break in the ink or stamp and polish, which is what that's actually called. So I'm gonna push down here. It really has helped me out. And we don't need it to be that perfect. I am just showing you how to do this. Um, some people remove things from their stamping, from their stamper uh, with uh, dotting tools and that's fine too. But I find with those larger lines, it's the tape that does it for me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do mine. I tend to put more layers of product on my reverse stamps than uh, some people do because I have had to remove and reapply or adjust the position of my stamps before because I do have a, an intermittent trimmer. But I have found it, but even before my trimmer got bad, I, I found it so useful to be able to kind of pull up, you know, and push down the, uh, the reverse stamp where you actually want it. Anyway, so I tend to do, the other thing it helps me do when I do two or three coats. So I'm gonna put one coat here, we're gonna let it dry. We're gonna put another coat. For me, when I'm doing mine, I do three of the Wet n Wild Clear coat. Or one of this, which is a little stiffer and more brittle, but it is okay. And so sometimes when I have to turn my stamps over to reverse them, after I turn them into reverse stamps, you can turn it over before you start coloring it in so that you don't have to do that messing with the stampers, two different stampers, method because that has never worked for me. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put this aside, but for me, I'm going to do three. And then the other thing that lets me do is to use my fingertip or a little silicone tool. Um, my fingertip works a little bit better, but when I have three layers of clear on there, if I get just outside the lines, which because on a clear stamper, you can check from the other side to see how your coloring is doing. So I can use my fingertip, the nail, to kind of push the paint right back inside the glass. And that way I don't have to start over. Or um, another reason I tend to use multiple coats of clear is because I have had to use tiny bits of acetone to clean up my reverse stamping before. Um, there is somebody, at least a few people I think, on the Maniology group who call reverse stamping high stakes coloring book or high stakes coloring. I get it. Um, and I do tend to mess a lot of stuff up, which is why I tend to take my precautions. So we're going to color little bits of this design. Actually, I started on this one, so I'll continue on this one. We're going to color in the bits of the design uh, so that you... So this is basically a whole tutorial that does include reverse stamping. But, uh, well, I didn't want to make this white because, well, I'll just um, mix something really quick here. So, I'm going to put a little bit of white here. It's a glittery white or pearlescent. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow in there. And this is just a two liter. Now, normally I wouldn't work on top of dried nail polish because it will change the color of this white. Um, but I'm mixing it with yellow anyway. So, but that is a note when you're mixing your own colors, don't necessarily um, work on top of old dried nail polish. So I'm just filling all of this in. I don't have to be too careful. Um, if I were applying a color like dark gray or black or red or something, I would have covered this blue with white to maintain the purity of the color from the other side because something that you can do, and this will help you in times that you make a mistake, 
if you paint an area too light, like let's say I use this light yellow and then I look at the stamp from the other side and I find that the two are essentially indistinguishable, that um, the stamp and the polish um, blend together and you're like, oh, I needed to do a darker color than that. You know what you can do? You can put the the dark brown or gray or whatever it is you need to put a, pull around that imaginary yellow color that's blending in. You just put it with a darker color the way we put it with white to show up over bright colors. I don't know if you know that I back the reverse stamp in white, but I do. Anyway, so if you make your stamping reverse painting, my words are not coming tonight, sorry. Anyway, so if you paint a too light color, you can always go over it with a very dark color and see if it helps before you throw it away or before you start over. All right, so that's everything I really need to do. I could fill in the very corner of that black, but I don't actually care. And I don't know that I would care if I were wearing this Manny either. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, just in case I make a mistake while I'm painting, because it does happen, you don't have to do things in the order that I do them, but I am gonna go ahead and pre-back this whole area down here with white and color in the bottom of the Polaroid. I'm trying as I go to think of various things that I can, I might have to budge, fudge that. Sorry, I had to check through the other side, but through the lens, I wasn't seeing anything that I needed to see. So some of you have said that you wouldn't mind watching me paint. Do fast forward if this isn't fun. I'm gonna to get to the gradient part soon. In fact, I will timestamp this so that you can see when I actually start the gradient. So normally, <laughs> I have to tell you, if I notice that I have to color in a larger area, I will change brushes. I have over 40 fine detail painting brushes. Uh, just in front of me over here. So I have literally no reason not to be using the supplies that I actually have. Sometimes I will just mildly plop a little bit from the wand directly onto the reverse stamp. But I have to tell you, I have messed that up wickedly before. And so I, I tend to be a little bit more careful now your mileage may vary, as they say. Okay, so uh, I am not today, because I, I did this yesterday and it didn't turn out to be necessary. I'm not gonna color in the pineapple or the flowers over here. I'm just going to create this gradient for you. And then after I do this gradient for you, I'm gonna go ahead, sorry, after I do this gradient for you, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward on this stamp and do the reverse stamping on my own and then come back to do the gradient for you. Um, now that, although, now that we've been chatting a while, I can put the rest of the clear coat on my, where's my wet and wild clear coat? Here we go. Just so that I complete. If you haven't seen one of my videos before where I reverse stamp this way, that gives you the kind of procedure that I use. Friends, that concludes part one of my video. This has just been the reverse stamping part. Part two is the, using a gradient within a reverse stamp. Thank you. Don't forget to like this, subscribe, leave a comment. I live for those. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you in part two.